My name is Father Todd Philipson. I'm the current pastor here at St. Patrick Parish in Shadron. Right now we're in the Assumption Academy building. It's uh, a building that's 100 years old and it has uh, served the parish and the community for the last 100 years. It was for many of those years a K through 12 Catholic school. When the Catholic school closed, it became the parish life center. It became the center for the religious education program for the parish. And the parish offices are located here in this building. Well, when I moved here in 2016, uh, I found some files where Father Ed Courtney and a group of parishioners had done some long-range planning and they did some assessment of the facilities and they determined that the usefulness of this building was was coming to an end and they talked about a day when this uh, building would uh, no longer be able to be used and and they dreamed of a, a separate new building a new building here um, that would be a place for uh, parish offices and the religious ed program and, and any of the other uh, parish life type programs that happen here. The decision was made with our current parish community to build a new parish life center and to um, you know continue uh, using the arena for larger events in the parish. The arena has very much seen as as a uh, community center for the wider Shattering community for large group gatherings, wedding receptions, um, that sort of thing. So that will continue in that way while we have a new Parish Life Center. They had the church on 3rd and King. They had rebuilt it after the fire. A brick building was built after the original one burned. And so they had the land available to build a school because they had Shattern Academy up on the hill where CSC stands now. But there was a lot of Catholics in town that wanted their kids to go to a Catholic school. The original plans for the school started in 1912, but they didn't get the school, actually the money raised and the school built until 1923 and the first term started in 1924. I mean, 130 students at that time was quite a lot. For the small town, the population was only like, I think five, not even 5,000 at that time. That was quite a few. And I mean, there was a lot from Shattern and the, the area that came in on the trains and stuff like that. The land was available and the arena was built later. So that was added on later, even before the other church was built. And it wasn't built until they had the other building for the church was falling down and you know, needed to be replaced. But it was it was a, a lot of fun to work here. It was it was a Catholic school, but there was a lot of fun and games around the edges. I taught English and French, and uh, I ended up teaching ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade English at one time or another. And uh, I had uh, two French classes, and I had the, both libraries. I don't know what else. Seems like I was busy all the time, you know. You're supposed to have a break now and then, but I don't know that I ever had much of a break. <laughs> Started school here in 1960. Went through 11 grades here with uh, the sisters or nuns. Sister Claver was my first grade teacher. Taught me how to read and write, spell. Third grade was Sister Mary Jane, she was a good teacher, but no, she's awful strict on us boys. Girls got away with murder, but us boys, we didn't. If you stepped out of line, it tolerated a little bit to correct you, but uh, you kept it up. You were disciplined, sometimes physically, with a ruler. When you uh, kind of got to be a smart Alex, when they turned the ruler sideways and whacked you <laughs> instead of flat. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in this building. 
I was a religious ed teacher for many years and director for a while. I can remember the sounds of the kids running up and down the stairs quite a lot. Um, the bell ringing, the kids asking for snacks. I still have some of those kids now that they're older in class um, at the schools. I have their siblings. I see some of them now graduating and having kids of their own and bringing them to church. So that is kind of heartwarming for me to see new generations um, coming into the church. I think this uh, place, people have a, have a connection to this building um, and they can point to this building and they can point to various steps in their faith journey in their life. They can, they can say, you know, it was in this building that I prepared for religious education or it was in this building that I graduated from high school. So I think this is like a marker for people um, in their life and they, they associate events in their life and then their faith journey and their education journey with this building. At, at one time along the way, there were people that boarded here and I know that there were um, sisters who, who lived upstairs in the day. I can only imagine how busy and full and, and um, you know, how packed this place was with, with people living here, people going to school. It must have been um, quite the place to be in those early years. It was pretty slow, you know what I mean? The nuns, we didn't have any equipment. We didn't even hardly have, we had a few typewriters, but they were very old. And so there wasn't no computers or no nothing like that. We studied out of a book and, uh, and the nun or the teacher stood there the next day in front of us and asked us questions or whatever. And then of course we had tests. And uh, so it was pretty low key compared to what school's like now. It was a small school, you know, everybody knew everybody. And uh, I know every square inch of this school Top and bottom, same way with the arena. Under the stage, over the stage, every place. But anyway, we figured out the time frame and we get up on the third floor and we found out how we could get up on the roof of the school. There's a ledger on the roof, I don't know, about four foot tall, I suppose, something like that. We'd bring eggs to school in our lunch box. <laughs> Finagle around, sneak up, get up on top of the roof and then throw eggs at people in cars out here in the street. <laughs> and got out of there and never got caught. And that is one thing around here. Uh, we still had plenty of cut-ups, but you learned real quick not to get caught. I can remember telling my mom when we first moved here because phonics was something new to me and I didn't get the whole thing what they were trying to tell us and and you know you got in trouble for a lot of things um, that I didn't know you could get in trouble for but I can remember telling my mom I didn't want to go to school here anymore and everything because it was too hard and she said well my cousin graduated from here one of them and he was in the medical field then and she said he thanks the nuns to this day for everything he learned and that it made it easier for him, you know, to get this good job and, and everything. And I, and I got, so I learned that she was, she was right, you know, that I valued what they were instilling in us and everything, so. To me, they were very nice. I mean, I always got along with them really well. You know, I really did. Sister Teresina and Sister Mary Lewis and <laughs> Sister Mary Peter, I, I <laughs> she, she, she was fine too. And they all three had, had taught me at one class or another. And so we got along fine, I think. They were the ones that kind of helped to choose you, you know, if you're gonna be in the play or if you're gonna be, you know, and we, at Christmas time, we'd have a, a Christmas play. And at Christmas time, they'd put a play on in this room, this very room, there was a stage here somewhere. Our class would come over and watch in the late afternoons the, the plays, and they had all, the preps, preps had a school, and so everybody got to come and watch the play that Assumption students put on, which was a very good, but that was before my time. But uh, this room was packed with students. I mean, really packed. Sometimes when I'm down in that what's called the media room now, that was the first and second grade room, you know, I have flashbacks of, of that. 
The nun we had then was very athletic, I would call her, and she was a carpenter. Her dad had um, taught her how to be a carpenter, and I don't know what all, but she built that altar that's down there, and I think she built the little tables that were down there. I'm not real sure about that, but, and she was, she shot a deer, went out hunting in her habit and everything. One, I think she was in her habit. Anyway, the picture of her in the paper, she was had the deer in, in her habit. You had to pick the lock, and we'd get in the Assumption Academy, and then uh, we needed to, it was basketball. We played football, basketball, and we had to kind of be pretty careful with the lights. We knew how to turn the lights on and off, but we always kind of kept it halfway dark in there. So, But there's a few times, I think it was Father Deaver, we always watch this arena door over here because we could see a shadow coming that way and then they'd have to rattle it to open. The keys would rattle it. And <laughs> There's a few times there was a basketball bouncing on the <laughs> basketball court over here, <laughs> rolling it, and nobody's to be found. <laughs> we all had our hiding spots so we could go hide. and. We was all in pretty gosh darn good shape because most everything we did was run, 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 run. They played basketball and football. That was it though. And no girls, nothing for girls. I enjoyed going to the games because I got to cheer, but that helped. That was the reason I liked it because I got to go to games that way because I probably wouldn't have gotten to go otherwise. That's, that's where the school spirit was. I mean, you know, um, everybody had to play because they didn't have enough people. So, um, if you got hurt, <laughs> it was just kind of too bad. But, but yeah, that, it, it just was nice to see the support and, and just the, the way we all felt about the, the team and just going to the games and the pep clubs were very active. Everybody yelled, everybody screamed, everybody participated. It was, it was very nice. Well, why are we building this new building? Well, it's kind of an ongoing part of our master plan that we developed. And the reason we're doing this at this phase is the old <coughs> academy building is outdated. It's 100 years old, 2023. 20, not energy efficient, handicapped accessible, it's not. It's, it needs to be taken down and build a new one that is energy efficient, handicapped accessible, and they're trying to enhance the campus in a whole. The buildings are too close now. We need some open space. By doing that, we're generating some more parking for us. So it's a lot of pluses that we're doing this. You know, it needs to be done. But we understand that there's a lot of sentimental value that's attached to the old building that uh, people that are still going to our church have graduated from there. But they closed it back in 1970, so it hasn't been really occupied, except for the church office and some education classes, which is once a week. It's underutilized quite a bit, you know, so. Many people have a lot of memories of this building as Catholic school students, but also there's just a huge number of people who have been a part of St. Patrick's Parish and a part of the religious education program. Maybe they um, met with their parish priest or a staff member in the parish when they were preparing to get married here. Um, maybe they met with uh, a parish priest or a member of the staff when they were planning the funeral of a loved one. So a lot of memories in this place. Well, at first I didn't, <laughs> it kind of got me, but I understand, I've talked with a few people, that it's costing us too, because, you know, it's not real easy to heat, or so I am assuming it probably needs to be done. Now, of course, I don't think they'll ever have school here again, though. I, you know, but uh, we need an air room where they have to work, and, you know, if we need offices or whatever. Sometimes you kind of wonder if, Things are, are not as good as they used to be, but I, I, I don't, I, I have faith that this is an active community and the people they do have are, are good, good parishioners. I hope that it fulfills the, the needs 
that we have for, um, like I said, for, well, not just modern kids, but, you know, we all depend a lot on, on things. And, and when I worked here, it was very difficult to try to keep up with technology and everything just because of the wiring and all the age of this building. It was just, you couldn't update a lot of things and the plumbing and, and that sort of thing. So I do hope that the community and everybody after it's done, just like with our new church, um, there was division there, but I think people got so they really appreciated it and thought it was a beautiful, beautiful building and could see the value of the update. You spend 11 years of your life here, plus other years doing things and stuff. It's uh, still a great part of my life. Uh, I bet once a week or so, something to come up about it. You know, the teachers or something, and uh, it it structured my life, uh, put me in the right direction to take care of myself, and, and I had the basic tools to do that. It means a lot to me. I really hate to see it go. I don't want it to go, but I guess what you say is progress. Do it. I'm going to try to get some of this school to put out on the place. I got a dam that needs some uh, reinforcing, and it, the brick and brick and things like that will would work real good. I think it's time. I think the building has, I don't want to say necessarily outlived itself, but its day-to-day -day usefulness is coming to an end. It's over 100 years old and it's feeling its age. Even myself today had a hard time getting in and out of the building with bad knees and you can't get anybody with a wheelchair in or out of this building, basically. It's just time, I think, especially if we want to start drawing more people back into a Catholic faith. And I think it's time that we start pushing that again because I feel like we are losing some of our population in the church and stuff like that. And so maybe we need to revitalize the church and this is a way to do it, draw some more people in the building is just, it's a little sad and it's just time, I think. Well, I truly wish there was more schools like this. I mean, uh, I know think a lot of things has changed, but uh, those sisters and priests, they, they taught us. They made it work. A lot of people didn't like it, but that's what you went to school for, is to learn and learn how to take care of yourself and go. Well, it's, it's one of those things, the time moves on. You know, it's, it's an old building. It's, it's outlived its life, you know, even though it's got an old, a lot of old memories. To spend the money to renovate that and put an elevator in and make it more ADA accessible, it just isn't worth the money. That's the realization. And how do you balance that realization against old memories? It, it's just hard, you know. I understand that. but. In the long run, I guess it's good for the, for the parish. So I think it's a good solution, and um, I can't see much how we can improve it. You know. I think it'll work for years to come. The, the plans for the new building and the video walkthrough of the new building, when people are seeing that, they're, they're, they're impressed with the new building. And I think the archway and the, the carryover from the old building will be a, a good thing. With anything new, you know, there's always uh, adjustments. I think this, this is uh, an exciting time. I'm very grateful to the people of our parish and to the community. One feature of it is on the west side of the building. That was the old entrance. It came in from the west. There's a limestone archway, and we're reusing that into, into the new building. Just kind of carry over some of the old history and put it into the new building. And a lot of people like that. New classrooms uh, for students to use, which will be very nice. Heat in the winter, that's a big one. I mean, in, and adults will be able to use it also for meetings like the parish council and the um, AA uses our building now um, for meetings and stuff, so I'm certain they wouldn't mind having air conditioning. 
people can't get to the office. Um, they have to call and say, you know, can you come out to me? I send my son all the time because, like I said, I have a hard time climbing the stairs. There's going to be a lot of uh, up-to-date codes. I think we're way past some of the things that we should have addressed a long time ago. We're just in serious need of some updating. It'd be nice if the kids could have the same kind of memories about the new building as I've got about the old one. It's a hell of a lot of money, a hell of a change. I don't know if I, I hope that it will also attract more church activities, uh, people being involved with church and everything. I think it might take a little time, but I think eventually uh, when they see the difference and the difference that it makes in how that it can be taken care of, I think maybe that, you know, it won't take too long for people to accept it. The people that went to school here are attached to the building, and I can understand that they are sad to see it go, but they still have their memories, and that's not gonna go away, and I'm getting, because <laughs> I was here for a long time, but it's time. Well, it was a very nice school to have be a part of, and we had a lot of fun, and we worked hard, but it was, it was good. It was just good. It'd be nice that uh, the youth coming up can have the freedoms and the fun and the things at school that I have going here. Um, we had a lot of freedoms. At the time I didn't, but when I look back on it now, I do. So it was one of the better times of my life. I'm just happy that I'm a part of this group, this, this church. Proud to have been, a, been able to attend the academy when I, when I did, and I'm very grateful that I was able to benefit from the, from the strictness and the, the discipline of the nuns. All the priests and just that I've gotten to know and just, just everything, grateful for, for all of it, and I hope that we can move forward in a positive way. This place, to me, was a place of renewing and building my faith and learning right along with everyone else. It's hard, but also with my age and growing older, we need to realize that this building isn't conducive to everybody being able to come in and out of it anymore. There always comes a time, whether we really want to do it, but there always comes a time that we have to face the fact that some of the things have to be done. For those that had went to school here and then had family that went to school here and some of them that even boarded here and went to school and they have a lot of memories of all the nuns and all the things that you know some of the tales that I've heard about putting popcorn in the janitor's beds and different things like that that the kids got away with and for them it's probably hard but life changes and as we get older we realize that a lot more than we did when we were younger. When we came to Shadron from Ardmore, my dad, I figured maybe I'd go to high school or somewhere, but my dad right away said, you're gonna go to this Fellowship Academy, because he wanted me to have religion. And, and I'm glad that I did. We did things, of course, here at that time that were connected with religion, and because we had masses on certain days and we'd all go to the mass together, and uh, I think that part of it helped me a lot because I went to a country school and then there in Ardmore we didn't do anything. If we got to church on Sunday, that was it. We, no, no extra. <laughs> in this place, it's a big part of your life. Oh yeah. Yes, it was. We had a lot of good moments with kids, just even in prayer or just bonding time. I just really liked getting to know the kids and sharing their faith with them and introducing that faith with them. You have to 
give kids something to believe in other than just attending mass every week. And I think that's what this school was about originally in the beginning, was supporting that Christian faith and that Catholic faith. I, th I think this building is a special place, a place where memories will, were made, but people will um, also remember this building as uh, a place that planted memories in their hearts. And so I, I do have personal memories in this building, and I, I look very much forward to, to taking those memories, taking that lived experience forward into uh, the new building and, and being part of the, the future. Mm -hmm.